Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. This is Jamie. I'm so glad you are here with me today. Thank you for tuning in, whether you're watching live or later. And I just wanted to uh, come online today and pray for you a little bit, talk to you about some upcoming live events we have going on. Good morning. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll just wait a minute while Facebook notifies everybody that we are live. So good morning, good morning. Thank you for tuning in. Let me know you're here when you're here, because otherwise I just see a little eyeball that says there are six people online. I can't tell who you are. Hey, Tina. Hey, Terry. Thanks, Terry. Yes, so today is my birthday. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kendra. Thank you. Yes, so it's the big 4-0. That would be 4-0. And I was feeling, hey, hey, Sonia, hey, Nia. I was feeling kind of, um, let's say, emotional about this over the last couple of weeks. But today I felt a lot better because I suddenly realized, hey, here in the U.S., we count birthdays to where, like, you, when you're born, you live a whole year and then you turn one, which actually means you have finished one year. So um, I'm turning 40 today, which means I've actually finished 40 years. And so that made me feel a lot better because this is actually the start of the 41st year. So it's like I got to skip the little milestone, you know, the whole over the hill thing. Although I don't know when that happens. Is that 40, 50, or 60? I don't know. But anyhow, um, so yeah, feeling better. Excited to have a birthday. It's better to be alive than not to be, right? God's good, so life is good. Okay, so let me know when you're here. Let me know where you're from. And I just want to pray for you guys a little bit today and talk to you a little bit about some things we have coming up for you. Our very first, it's not our first live streaming because I've live streamed Facebook and I've live streamed webinars here from the hub. But our very first live worship and prophecy burn is coming up. Yay, it's free. Aww. Does that sound good? I just cannot wait. That's right, Terry, 26, uh-huh, or 41 or 40 or, you know, whatever. Hey, Tammy. Hey, Allison. Hey, Yolandi. Hello, Ms. Joan. Terry, you're turning 50. That's awesome. Congrats. Hey, Tina. Okay. So, anyhow, um, yeah, I have, hey, Kendra, Arkansas. Awesome. What part of Arkansas? Stella. Stella, I've been praying for you with that job situation. How is that going? I hope you're having success in your hunt. Um, okay, so here's the deal. Um, next, not this Friday, which is the 11th, but next Friday, which is the 18th, you guys know we um, that is going to be Rosh Hashanah, right? It starts at sundown on Friday night. Well, that is the Jewish New Year. It's the beginning of the Hebrew year 5781. Someone asked me this morning, what does 5781 mean? And I thought, that is a great question. So, you know, 5781 is the number of the Hebraic year that is about to start because in the Jewish religion, um, on their ecclesiastical calendar, their church calendar, their religious calendar, they count years differently than we do um, on the Gregorian calendar. So on the Gregorian calendar, the year is 2020, right, which is approximately 2020 years um, after the birth of Christ, um, you know, AD. It's not, it's not exact. It's off by two or three years, most scholars say, but that's approximate, okay? But um, the Hebrew calendar is different. It counts, if I recall correctly, I think they estimate that it counts from creation or from their estimation of creation, but I'm not positive about that. But anyway, it is the 5,781 year on the Hebraic calendar, and it starts soon on Friday. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, we've got people still logging on. Yay, please share this video if you wouldn't mind. I just want to pray for everybody, and uh, if you'll share it with lots more people, we can pray for more people. So anyway, um, it starts on Friday, and what we are going to do is at 3.30 approximately, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, which is the time zone I'm in, Eastern, um, we're going to do two two-hour sets. So we're going to do from 3.30 to 5.30. This is Lord willing, you know, this is the plan. 3.30 to 5.30. And um, that's going to be a set that's going to be about a particular topic. I'm not going to share the exact topic right now because I haven't talked to my team about it yet when I'm about to do that. Um, but anyway, the Lord gave me the topic this morning. I've been like, I was uh, driving down to work, just like listening to worship music on this topic and just crying, worshiping God. It was great. So anyway, um, then 
after that, uh, we're going to take a break for one hour for dinner because, you know, it's hard to get intercessors and musicians to come in and uh, work nonstop without feeding them, right? Um, and I don't do well without food either, so I know y'all need food too. So we're going to take a break from 5.30 to 6.30 to eat and um, or do whatever you do. And then we're going to resume from 6.30 to 8.30. Okay, so two, approximately two hour sessions. And it's going to be our team prophesying over you, praying for you, praying for individual prayer requests as much as we can. I'm going to do some teaching. I may have um, just, you know, um, when I say teaching, I don't mean like a class, but it's going to be like me releasing some words that the Lord has given me in some exhortations and uh, for the year, for 5781. And then I might have several of our team members release a word or a teaching or a bit of wisdom um, that I feel led to have them speak about, they feel led to speak about. Um, so, but basically we're going to do those two two-hour sessions, okay? And so it's free, and I'm going to broadcast it here on this Facebook page, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. And then uh, what we'll do, if possible, I will try to figure out how to stream it live on YouTube too, because not everybody's on Facebook. But if not, then I'll just upload it to YouTube later, okay? But please save that time. It's Friday the 18th. We're going to be praying over you, prophesying over you, uh, worshiping with you, and so on. So please make that a time when you can just set aside, if possible, to say, Lord, I'm going to enter into this new Hebraic year, Rosh Hashanah, the start of the new year on God's calendar. Enter into that in a time of consecration, a time of worship, to where the new year comes into your worship, okay? You enter in the new year worshiping, basically. Um, if you want to go in fasting and praying, hey, you know, that's always an awesome thing to do. I definitely love to do that, enter in any new season. Um, but, yeah, just when you set that on your calendar, September the 18th, okay? And then, um, what's the other thing I was going to tell you? Oh, okay, yeah. So it's looking like, this is exciting too, it, um, we are going to be rebooting our Denver, Colorado um, conference. It's going to be this coming June because we have a contract with the hotel and they said you can delay the contract for a year because of the coronavirus, but you can't get out of the contract. So, like, okay. So um, that's coming up this June, and I believe we haven't got all the details finalized on the contract, but they have given us the weekend. I'm looking June 2021. They have given us, I believe it is the 11th, 12th, and 13th, okay? So, um, please write that on your calendar. God gave me the topic for that this morning. It's going to be fantastic, fantastic, okay? And um, it's going to be cheap. It might be free. I don't know, but if it is if it's not free and it is cheap and you need a scholarship, even though it's cheap, please tell me and I will do everything I can to make sure you get a scholarship to cover your ticket price. Okay, I want everybody there. Everybody there. We're going to do three days or two and a half days, however it works out, two and three quarters days of prophetic mentoring. It's going to be awesome. That's next year, June 20, June of 2021. I believe it's the 11th, 12th, and 13th. Okay. All right. So now let's pray. I want to pray for you guys. Um, I want to pray for you to live purposefully and diligently today. Check this out. This is what um, one of the scriptures that I was reading this morning. I was soaking up Proverbs, and I love Proverbs, okay? Proverbs is the book of wisdom, and wisdom is just Holy Spirit personally applied to your situation, okay? So whatever is going on in your life, if you, um, if you need wisdom, that means, um, that means you're asking the Lord for Holy Spirit to apply himself to your situation and help you do what his perfect will is. That's wisdom. So anyway, um, I was looking at this this morning, and um, where is my verse? Where is my verse? Where is my verse? Okay. Oh, here it is. Proverbs 10, verse 4. It says, he who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Okay, the hand of the diligent makes rich. Why is that important? Because everything that has to do with your prosperity, your wealth, your success, your blessing, all of these things 
are dependent upon your level of diligence. That may sound too simplistic, but think about it. If you're diligent to obey God, if you're diligent to seek God first and seek his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. If you're diligent to walk worthy and walk before the Lord in white, if you're diligent to be humble, if you're diligent to obey all the financial principles that God has outlined in his word, if you're diligent to, um, to work hard, increase your income, you know, spend less than you make, save and invest, all these things, if you're diligent, everything about blessing has to do with your diligence. And so I discovered a long time ago that it was, um, it was really just, um, how do I say this? I discovered a long time ago that my life works best and everybody's life works best. I'm just talking about myself, but this works for everybody. Life works best when you discover the one thing you're meant to do and the one thing that you're meant to seek after and just live for that, okay? And so my personal life first is uh, Psalm 27, 4, which says, one thing will I ask of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. And so my one thing was just, God, I want to seek after your presence. One thing if I ask of the Lord that I may dwell in your house. That's my one thing. And everything I do about life is about that one thing. Now, sometimes I mess up. Sometimes I, you know, get off track. Sometimes I, you know, do things that are definitely not seeking God first, like, um, you know, arguing with the husband, getting mad at the child, you know, my child, you know, messy house, things like that. But, um, you know, we're always, the Lord is always taking you from glory to glory, faith to faith, and strength to strength. And so as we mess up, he convicts us. We pray, God, keep me on a short leash because, Lord, I want to live for that one thing, right? And so when you narrow down that one thing and you can just focus on that, you can eliminate all the noise. You can eliminate all the static. You can eliminate all the, um, the busy work, okay? The things that are not related to your one thing that really just hold you back. Because remember the Apostle Paul said that he um, puts away the things that are behind and he presses on to those things which are ahead. And in another passage, he said that, you know, you have to run to win. No one runs to lose. You don't fight to, to lose. You have to put away the things that would hold you back and you run to win. And um, that's my, you know, authorized by myself translation. But that's what the Apostle Paul taught. So I want to pray for you today that you would have focus and that you would know the one thing that you were made to do, okay? That you would know the one thing you're meant to seek after and that you would chase that, that you would have all diligence, that you would keep your heart with all diligence, right? To, to go after God and to chase his one thing, which is, of course, him personally first. Excuse me. But then... After that one thing personally, then you want to um, you want to chase whatever he has called you to do. The Apostle Paul said that he presses on for the prize, the upward call of Christ Jesus, for that thing for which Christ has laid hold of me. Okay, that he presses, and I think that's in Philippians. Let me open that up. Um, because he was saying, God has laid hold of me for something. Okay, and... Um, and he's saying, where if I can find it here, here it is. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Okay. Um, Oh, and I'm sorry, verse 12, because I was like, where? That, that did not say what I thought it said. <laughs> sorry, verse 12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. So basically what Paul is saying is that God has grabbed onto you for something. And Paul says, the thing that God has grabbed me for, I'm going to chase after that thing that I can grab hold of it. Okay. And so I want you to know that God has grabbed onto you for something. You know, I wish I had like a, some, a, a doll or something I could show you, but or a child here. You know, if my son was here, he's only three, right? Or two, actually, he's about to turn three. But um, I, you, you could grab onto his head, right? You could grab yourself, you know, God, just imagine God has grabbed onto your head, um, not in a violent way, but he's grabbed onto you. He's saying, 
He's saying, you know, Stella, Allison, Yolandi, Kim, I am grabbing onto you for this one thing. And he has this one thing. I don't know if it's being a mom, being a dad, but that's like, you know, the fullness of your call, or maybe you're called to preach or do business, or maybe you're an artisan, a craftsman, maybe you're a great athlete or whatever it is. But God has laid hold of you, and he's like, I want you to do this for my kingdom. And so the Apostle Paul said that he's laying aside all the things um, that hold on to him so that he can lay hold of that thing that God has gripped his head with, okay, that God has gripped his heart with. And I want you to have that kind of focus. Does that sound good to anybody? Do you, does, it, does it sound appealing to you to live for one thing and not be distracted? Let me know in the comments. Not be, you know, just batting at the air, boxing with shadows, constantly chasing your tail. To live with focus and intensity and determination. To live with diligence, chasing after one thing. Knowing who you are. I'm sorry, knowing who you are. Knowing what you're about. And doing that with your whole life. Does that sound good? Let me see in the comments if anybody thinks that's um, a good idea. I'll wait just a minute while folks answer. Let me know what you think. You don't need to just listen to me preach. I want to talk with you. Hmm? Ah, okay. There's a yes. Sonia says yes. Awesome. Anybody else? Allison? All right, there's Allison, Ms. Stevens, Jean Lee, Nia, awesome. Okay, so I'm seeing some yeses in the chat, good. So I want to pray for you about that, all right? So let's pray. Here we go. Um, Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name, and Lord, I just thank you for every single one of my friends who is watching this video. Lord, I ask right now in Jesus' name that you would help them to know the one thing you have called them to do. Lord, I pray they would be so hot on fire, laser focused in first on you, God, on your presence, on obeying you, on seeking first your kingdom and your righteousness so that all these things can be added to them. Lord, I pray that they would just be hungry for you with so much passion, Father, that they would be desperately hungry for you and desperately thirsty for you and that their love for you would drive them and compel them and constrain them, Father. But Lord, after that, I pray that they would know, each of them would know the one thing that Christ Jesus has laid hold of them for. And I pray, God, for each of them that they would be diligent. I ask that you would convict each of my friends and me, Father, with a new level of diligence, a new level of focus, Keep us on a short leash, Father, so that anytime we get off track, anytime we sin against you or whatever thing, Father, that you would just bring us right back around onto the right track with you, God, that you would help us to walk worthy of the divine calling to which we have been called with our behavior being a credit to the summons to your service. And Father, I ask you in Jesus' name that every single person would have a passion for the one thing you've called them to do and that you would uncover that one thing, even if it's hidden under layers of scales and layers of obstacles in their hearts, layers of dead dreams, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every dead dream that Father God has for you, that he wants to live again, and I say live in Jesus' name. Right now, we speak resurrection to every single dream that Father has for you. Lord, we decree and declare that no weapon formed against my friends will prosper. No weapon, Father, will prosper. And every tongue that rises against them in judgment, they will condemn and show to be in the wrong. Father, I thank you that no weapon coming against their calling will prosper. That they will rise up and they will fulfill every single bit of the destiny that you have for them, Father. And Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask also, Lord, that you would help them to strip off every encumbrance and set aside every weight that so easily besets them, Father, that they would run with endurance this race before them, that they would keep their eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of their faith, Father God. Lord, I ask that they would strengthen those hands that hang down and make firm those feeble knees, that what is lame may not be dislocated, but may rather be healed. I ask you to give them a new passion, a new fervor, a new fire for their calling, God 
that you would give them dove's eyes that look only one direction, that that direction would be looking at you, and that they would hear, Lord, give them ears to hear and eyes to see and nose to smell your fragrance of what you're leading them to every single day, that they would just look at you and do what you do and say what you say, God, so that no matter what, they'll just carry out your perfect will for their lives every single moment of every day. God, give them focus. I release focus into them. I release the ability to plan. I release the vision casting ability, the ability to dream right now in Jesus' name. And I release a higher level paradigm and perspective right now. And I decree and I bless you that every person who has a kingdom paradigm and a kingdom perspective, big thinking, large thinking, not small mindedness, big thinking, big horizons, Father. Lord, I decree and declare that their horizons, my friends' horizons match your horizons. And I know you see eternity. You can see the east and the west at the same time, Father. You are God who sits above the circle of the earth. So I pray you'd enlarge my friends and their territory and their paradigm and their thinking and their ability to dream and plan and strategize that much, Lord, and even bigger. Lord, release the things in my friends that eye has not seen and ear has not heard, those things that have not entered into the heart of man that you have laid up and stored up for those who love you. Father, we thank you that your eye is roaming to and fro throughout the earth, seeking the heart that is completely yours. And Lord, we say our hearts are yours. Our hearts are yours. Lord, let your eye set on us. Let your eyes settle on us. Lift up your countenance upon us. Be gracious to us and give us peace. And I speak that blessing over every person. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. And I ask for that new fire under my friend's feet and that new bounce in their step as they chase the one thing, Father, that everything else other than your call and your obedience, everything else would be counted as loss, would be counted as dross, would be counted as dung, Father. They would count as nothing if it's not your plan for their lives, God. Get them out of the busy work. And in the name of Jesus, we cut off the static right now. We cut off the static right now and the noise in Jesus' name with the blood and the word of God. And we say, peace, be still. Just as Jesus spoke to the storm, we say, peace, be still. Thank you, Father. We love you. We choose to enter into your rest and into your diligence at the same time. We give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, friends, I love you. You're awesome. Hey, check it out. Um, again, this this. Uh, next Friday the 18th, we're going to do four hours of live prayer and prophecy over you. 3.30 to 5.30 Eastern Time. Skip an hour for supper break, dinner break, whatever you want to call your evening meal. And then another two hours from 6.30 to 8.30, okay? I'm going to be speaking over you. My team's going to be speaking over you, praying for you, prophesying over you, worshiping with you. We're going to have live music um, from uh, our staff. Uh, Minister Michael Itson and Minister Kara Green, who is a, a partner with us um, and, and one of our ministry team. And also she has her own ministry, and so does Minister Michael, actually. But we're all going to be here working together. Minister Mamie Blow is going to be here with me, Lord willing. And the four of us are going to be releasing the Word of God over you, praying for your request, prophesying over your life, okay? Please be sure to write that down. September 18, be here. And then tomorrow at, I believe it's 3.30 on the TCT Network, I will be um, appearing live via Zoom on um, the TCT Network's prayer show, okay? I'm so excited about that. We're going to be in, I believe, 60 million homes live. So please pray for me. Ah, Jesus is going to do it. It's going to be awesome. And they have asked me just to um, speak encouraging words over the people, to pray for you, and to speak about some things the Lord is speaking to me prophetically. So I'm going to be doing that on the TCT Network tomorrow. I believe it's 3.30 Eastern Time. Um, I will verify that, and I'll send out an email to ver to let everybody know. But um, you can watch that live if you get the TCT Network, which I believe is in the Midwestern U.S. and out in the West. Um, we don't have it right here where I live. But anyway, very exciting stuff. And um, also, if you have not, I have just this many copies of my book, Pray in the Names of God, and this many copies that I can sell of getting to know the sevenfold Holy Spirit, okay? I did have one copy left of Radical Prayer, Radical God, but someone bought it. Here it is. Um, so that's already shipped out. I have some more um, being ordered. Um, but anyway, 
If you have not gotten these, these are so important because you need to know Holy Spirit. We are going into a new year. It's going to be a great year for God's people. But if you don't have Holy Spirit, you're going to, and if you aren't, I mean, if you're saved, you have Holy Spirit. But I mean, if you aren't walking in the manifest glory cloud of God's Holy Spirit every day, it's not going to be easy for you, okay? It's going to be a year of chaos, but it's going to be a year of blessing. God's people will be blessed. The world may be in chaos, but God's people will be blessed in 2021 and in 5781. But you need this because this is how you get the anointing and the glory cloud by getting to know Holy Spirit in these seven ways. This is about the sevenfold Holy Spirit, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of knowledge, the fear of the Lord, and so on. Um, this is important. If you haven't got this, please get a copy. And if you do not know how to tap into the names of God, and I don't mean the Hebraic names that everybody talks about. I mean to read the pages and dig out the names of God like a miner, to dig out the names of God through the pages of his word for yourself, Please get this. I only have a few left. This is like less than 10, maybe. And again, I do have some on order, but um, it'll take a little bit to get here. Please get these. They're on my Gumroad store. You can just go to our website, fromhispresence.com, and then click on the store menu, and you can order them easily. Or you can go to gumroad.com. Um, Connie, hang on a second. I will answer that. Um, I'm going to just put this, HTTPS, www gumroad.com from his presence okay that's the um that's the actual website i just put it over there connie asked can we purchase in canada you can purchase the ebook in canada and you can also purchase directly from our printer in canada and i'll drop a link connie and they will actually print it in canada and ship it to you um, i cannot ship to canada but there are other ways to get the books okay so let me drop this link this is for canada okay and then um yes let me know if you have any other questions okay but please while there are just a few copies of these left right now get these books okay i didn't write them because i needed to write a book for my health and even though i have goals about writing books i did not write them for fulfill goals i wrote these for you under the anointing and the unction of the Lord, he was rushed upon me and said, pull this material together now that it's taken me years to write in some cases. Pull it together. The people need this in written form. Okay? So this is what we did. Get the books. All right. I love you guys all. Mwah. Have an awesome day.